how do you solve validation as a cross-cutting concern inside of the clean architecture? A very elegant way to implement this is using mediators, pipeline behavior, and the Fluent Validation Library, and I'm going to show you how to achieve this in this video. Let me walk you through the integration of the Fluent Validation Library in the application layer of a clean architecture project. I prefer to install the Fluent Validation Dependency Injection Extensions package because it allows me to also register my validators from this assembly. And once I have this package in place, I can go ahead and implement my custom validators. I have an example in the customers folder for the create customer command. It accepts an email and a name to be able to register a new customer. And then inside of the create customer command validator, I have an async validation in place checking that the email is unique. Now this is susceptible to a race condition, so I also have a unique index at the database level making sure that nothing goes wrong. Currently how this validator is executed is inside of our minimal API endpoints, or more specifically the post endpoint for registering a new customer, I'm injecting an I validator of create customer command, and then I'm using the validator to validate this command before letting the request proceed to the command handler. Now this isn't really ideal and you don't want to be injecting the iValidator for every single command in your system because you're going to end up writing a lot of boilerplate code. Now I also want to mention how these validators are registered. Inside of the dependency injection static class, I'm calling the add validators from assembly method and I'm giving it the application assembly reference so that it can scan the application assembly itself and add any validators as the appropriate implementations of the iValidator interface. This is the high level overview of integrating the Fluent Validation Library to implement validation and now let's see how we can make it better using mediators pipeline behavior. I'm going to start by creating a behaviors folder inside of the abstractions folder and I'm going to define my pipeline behavior inside of this folder. So let's add a new class and I'm going to call it validation behavior. This is going to be a generic class accepting a T request and a T response argument. These are also going to be passed to the I pipeline behavior interface. So let's pass the T request and the T response. And now we can implement this interface. You'll see that it's giving me the current request, which is going to be my command or query instance, the request handler delegate, which is the respective handler for my command or query, and also the cancellation token so that I can cancel the request. If I leave the validation behavior like this, it's going to run for all commands and queries in my system. I would want to scope this to only run for commands, and here's how you can do it. I'm going to create one more folder, which I'm going to call messaging, and I want to add my own custom abstraction for an I command interface inside. Let's give it the name of I command base. And I'm going to use the I command base interface to implement two more interfaces. So the first one is going to be an I command without any arguments, and it's going to implement I request from mediator and also the I command base. And this is all that I need for this interface. And I'm also going to create an I command of T, or I can say T response for any command that I need to return some data from. And this is going to implement I request of T response from mediator and also the I command base. So these are the two interfaces that I'm going to use to implement my commands. And now I can go ahead and adjust the create customer command. And instead of implementing an I request, we're going to implement an I command. And this is also going to implement the I command base by extension. The whole point of this is being able to go to the validation behavior and add a generic constraint. Now I can say where T request, and I'm going to say that T request has to be an I command base implementation. And now this is only going to apply to my commands as long as I'm following the convention that my command classes implement one of the two I command interfaces. Now, what do I need inside of the validation behavior to implement validation? So we're also going to be using the I validator approach, except I'm going to add a collection of them because there might be more than one. So let's inject the I validator of the request, which is going to be just our command validator. And let's inject this from the constructor. And now inside of the handle method, we're going to first start by making it asynchronous. The validation should be done before we send the request. And then we can say await next. 
And of course, I need to grab the result returned by the request handler delegate. And then I can just return this from this method to satisfy the handle method. As far as validating our request goes, we're going to start by creating a new validation context. So I'm going to say new validation context. I'm going to give it the T request generic argument and I'm going to pass my request object inside. Again, I repeat, this is going to be our command. Now we need to go through our list of validators and for each validator, we're going to select the result of the validate method and we're going to pass it our validation context. The validate method is going to return a validation result and we want to select these results. So what we can do is say where the validation result and we can say that we're looking for any validation result that is not valid and we're going to say select many and we're going to grab off the validation result the list of validation failures. So now we're working with a collection of validation failures and what I can do is again project this list. So I'm going to grab the validation failure and let's see what we have available on this object. So we're mostly looking for the property name, which is the property that we were validating on the command, which caused the initial error and also the error message of what actually went wrong. If you're also using custom status codes, then the error code property could be valuable to you, but I'm going to use the property name and the error message for my case. So I'm going to create a new anonymous object and let's give it these two properties. So I'm going to grab the property name and the error not code. We're going to grab the error message. And now I can say to list. We're materializing a list of objects containing a property name and an error message. And I'm going to call this var errors. Now that we have a list of failures, we can do a check here and say if errors any. And then the question is, what should we do here? The simplest solution would be to throw some sort of validation exception, which we are going to grab in the global exception handler and return an appropriate response from our API. So there's already a validation exception, which you can use, and it's available in the Fluent Validation namespace. It accepts a list of validation failures, but then you'd be coupled to the Fluent Validation library. Now you're already coupled to it in the application layer itself, so there is not much harm in using this exception, but if you want to do something custom, I'm going to show you how to achieve this. So I'm going to create an exceptions folder inside of the application layer. So let's call it exceptions and let's add our custom validation exception inside. So this is going to be the validation exception class. Let's go ahead and implement the exception base class. And I'm going to create a small helper class, or actually this is going to be a record, which I will call validation error. So let's give it the properties of property name and another string property, which I'm going to call error message. And by design, this is the same properties that I'm using in the validation behavior on my anonymous object, because I'm going to be creating an actual validation error instance. So now inside of my validation exception, I can create a property which contains an I read only collection of validation errors. And let's give it the name of errors. And we're only going to give it a getter. And then inside of our constructor, we're going to also accept an I read only collection of validation errors and let's assign this to our property. So we can also pass an exception message to the base constructor saying validation failed. You can make it more complicated if you need to, but this is just an example, so this should be sufficient. Now we can go back to the validation behavior. Because I'm using the Fluent Validation namespace, our custom exception isn't visible, so I'll have to specify the namespace more specifically. And then here, I also want to be creating a new validation error instance. So let's give our property name and the error message value. And now I should be able to pass this list of errors to this constructor. And you can see that this is working. And now all that's left to do is to handle this in some sort of middleware in the API project. I'm going to show you how to do this quickly. Inside of the API project, I'm going to add a new folder, which I will call middleware. And I'm going to add a class inside, which is going to be the exception handling middleware. I'm not going to go through the implementation step by step. The high level idea is we're creating a middleware by convention, which means I'm injecting a request delegate through the constructor. And then I have an invoke async method, which accepts an HTTP context. 
and how you handle a middleware is just invoking the delegate and passing it the context instance and then you have the freedom to add your own behavior to the middleware in this case i'm adding a try catch statement and catching any exception that is thrown during the execution of the request delegate i'm doing some simple error logging and then i'm extracting some exception details from this exception instance now inside of this method I'm referencing the validation exception which we defined in the application layer to grab some exception details. This is a helper class to allow me to create my problem details response in the middleware itself. And I'm also taking the validation errors from the exception instance so that I can pass them to the problem details. Now back in our invoke async method, after we grab the exception details, I'm creating a new problem details instance. In case there are any errors on the exception details, I'm adding them to the problem details extensions. This is a dictionary that allows me to specify key value pairs, and you can use it to introduce arbitrary types to your problem details response. And then I'm just writing this into my HTTP response by calling write as JSON async. This is also going to set the content type on our response, so we don't have to manually set it to application slash JSON. You have to add this middleware to the pipeline, the easy way to do this is by saying app use middleware and then specify your custom exception handling middleware. Make sure to get the namespace right. To be able to try this out, I need to make a few small adjustments. First, I'm going to get rid of the manual validation that I had in this endpoint. And I'm also going to register my actual validation behavior with mediator by saying config and open behavior and I'm going to specify my validation behavior type. So now with all of this in place, we should be able to run the project and see what's going to happen with the validation. I'm going to send this request from Postman and let's see what's going to happen. We hit our validator and we create the context and now let's try to execute the validation itself. So I'm going to run into an exception and if I press continue, eventually I'm going to land in my exception handling middleware. So at least we know it's working correctly and catching the exceptions. Now let's take a look at the exception itself and see what it's trying to tell us. The message is pretty descriptive and it says validator create customer command validator, which is the one that we are trying to run for this command, contains asynchronous rules, but it was invoked synchronously. And it's asking us to please call validate async instead of validate. Now I did this on purpose to show you what's going to happen if you try to run asynchronous validation, but you're calling the synchronous version of the validate method. This is where the exception is actually thrown. So all we would have to do to fix this is call validate async. But then this is going to cause other problems because validate async is an async method and it returns a task of fluent validation results. So let me slightly adjust this so that we can make it work again with asynchronous validation. I'm going to take the calls to the validate async method and we can create a variable here which I'm going to call validation failures and we're going to say await task when all and I'm going to give it all of these tasks. This is actually going to return an array of validation failures, but that should be good enough for our use case. So let's replace all of this with validation failures, and then all of this should be working and let's test it out. I'm sending the same request from Postman to the API again. We hit the breakpoint inside of the validation behavior, and now we're going to try to run our validation by using the task when all approach. So we get back our list of validation failures, you can see there's only one of them inside and it says that the email must be unique and we're going to now create our errors and we're going to end up throwing the validation exception that we created and it's going to be handled in our exception handling middleware. So let's go through those steps. We're going to add the errors to the problem details response and eventually we're going to return this from our API. Now let's check out what the response looks like in Postman. Here's the response that we get back. You can see it has the problem details structure it says that we ran into a validation failure. It's giving me a 400 bad request response. And there's the errors property here, which contains an array of validation errors. And this one says that the email must be unique. So this is how you can solve validation as a cross-cutting concern using the mediator and fluent validation libraries. If you enjoyed this video, then take a look at this video next. And until next time, stay awesome.